say that you have heard about Contenta uh, in the previous, the previous session. Um, it's all right. How do I advance this? Oh, you need to focus it again. <laughs> uh, there we okay. go. Cool. Sure. So uh, this is the three of us. Uh, I was not supposed to be on stage and not even in the program. Uh, but thankfully, in the end, I could make the uh, make the trip. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm Matteo. I wrote the JSON API module, the simple auth module, and the integration with the schemata module, and um, a bunch more because I like this. Stuff. Uh, this uh, the JSON API extras that we were talking just a minute ago. Uh, I'm an API first initiative coordinator for Drupal, uh, which means that if you want to work in this stuff and you don't know who to talk with, uh, you can talk to me and I can just bump the issue to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm going to let Sally introduce herself. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Sally Young. You might know me as Just a Fish. I'm a senior technical architect at Lullabot. I've been working on a couple of sites since around 2012. Uh, I started doing that as a back-end developer completely, um, and then I moved over to doing more JavaScript stuff, and now I just kind of float around in the middle of both somewhere. All right, and I'm Dan Avina, um, the Avina on the internet, and uh, yeah, I would like to be a scientist again, but like, actually it's way better to actually do work. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense of like, you don't get feedback in academia. All right. So around uh, DrupalCon Baltimore, like there was a lot of discussion happening. Like, I mean, this conference was a result of this discussion, but the, also the discussion was like, like how do we make it easy for people to do that kind of stuff? Like, using Drupal to decouple, right? To actually like have the front end and the back end decoupled, so you can actually like use multiple consumers and stuff like that. And one idea which came up, like there was an issue on Drupal.org, is like, let's make a distribution. Drupal, and especially like Dwee's always like talked about, yeah, distributions, they are like kick-ass and they will change any, everything. I'm not sure they actually did, but like, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, as part of this uh, discussion, there was like the idea, let's do a distribution. But like just doing a distribution is not like, it's not like a real solution. We've really thought about like, what is our, like tar target audience. And um, we are presenting now like three different like groups of people. Um, there's the front-end developer, um, there's the technical lead, and the Drupal developer. And uh, we'll talk about what they mean um, individually. So I will start with the front-end developer. So for us, a front-end developer, which is kind of a similar audience to Reservoir, is someone who probably like knows all the modern JS stuff and like has an opinion about what framework they want to use or maybe no framework. Um, like they really know JS for example, but they have no idea about Drupal. They rather probably want to avoid like those, you know, old style PHP based systems. So we kind of would have to convince them to use something like Drupal again. Um, so in order to convince them, we, we try to like give them actual benefits. And the one benefit we try to give them is to make it as easy as possible um, for them. The way how we do that is, for example, we provide, we provide a one command installation process. What that means, there is like one thing you have to do to download the thing, install it, like set up a database, and then start a web server up and then actually even opens up it in an actual browser and you can start right from there without any like additional work. Um, it's really nice to get started but I think like nobody would do that on like a production environment or something like that. But we do that to get them onto the like onto it and then after that they can actually like browse the documentation and stuff like that and then learn how to really use it. The other thing we did, we simplified the interface. You've probably seen exactly the same thing in the previous presentation because it's open source. So we basically just copied it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 
I mean, that's that's why we are in open source, right? Because it's not like competition; it's like collaboration. We really collaborated with the people there, and like, um, yeah. So we have the same kind of basic structure. We have content and content models and API and access control and stuff. One thing we have is, you see, the second point, which is media. So when we initialized, talked about this problem space, we like looked at Contentful. And if you look at Contentful, you see like content and content models, and then media. And media is its own thing, and you don't like treat it as part of your content model. Uh, because I think nobody really wants to like build a media solution when they want to build an actual website, but rather they want they just want to use what is available. So what yeah, what we provide are images uh, by default. So you can reuse images, but because it's like built upon the media ecosystem in Drupal, you can just expand it to YouTube videos and whatever you want. Um, so just a quick. Like one down of what technical things we have, it's basically exactly like Reservoir. So like JSON API, OAuth, um, JSON API extras and stuff. Um, we provide API documentation, which we'll, we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, and we also talk about like continuously about what could be the future. Like for example, how do you deal with image styles? I know Sally will talk about image styles later, so I don't want to spoil her. Um, yeah, we also had a discussion about GraphQL. Um, like, I personally think that like, GraphQL, like, like is is kind of probably the future. Maybe I don't know, but uh, there's a lot of momentum at least behind it. If you go into the like hipster uh, JS world, <laughs> yeah. but I I think like it, the the fact that you can compose multiple APIs together really easily um, is kind of appealing for me at least. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here's one point, the API documentation. Um, let's have a look at that. So we really want to, we are still in the front end developer world and we want to enable them to actually build stuff with it. So once they install it with a uh, contenter, um, they get like this uh, tutorial hub. It's a hub in the sense that we don't ship with documentation, but we rather point to the various sources out there. There are a lot of videos. Here are some, some of them. Matteo made amazing videos. Um, we also want to like link to blog posts, which you know explain visual editors or something in the decoupled world. We want to like link to the doc documentation or whatever is available out there. We also probably want to teach front-end developers how to model content with Drupal. Um, but not only we provide documentation, we also provide like API documentation or API reference. So like, yeah, you can see like we are using the same technologies like Reservoir, so Redux, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. Cool. So one of the other personas that we then looked at was a technical lead or the business stakeholder. And they're typically the people who are going to evaluate Drupal against other solutions. Um, so we're searching for this. We, we looked at lots of other things like Contentful or Prism.io, um, WordPress even has decoupled stuff now. And one of, one of the things we found was that we wanted to showcase a lot of the really hard problems that Drupal is trying to solve that these platforms haven't touched so much yet. So Drupal can handle loads of cool things like complicated workflows and multilingual and all kinds of stuff that's kind of on the edge there. And we really want to surface that because it's not necessarily obvious you can do all those things when you first install Drupal. <coughs> the other thing we want to do is also help these people if uh, they want to decide between doing a decoupled interface or if they want to go the sort of more traditional way you might build a website with Drupal. And one of the ways we've done that is to follow the out-of-the-box initiative, which I'll talk about in a second. And then if they do decide to go decoupled, uh, we want to take that like, collective um, knowledge we have about what kind of difficult things they're going to hit, and we want to provide some kind of solutions that have been tested in production and we know kind of work. So yeah, these are like implementations of, of things. Um, 
like routing and all kinds of stuff. And we've had some really amazing conversations amongst all the people that have come together to build Contenta. You know, how did you solve this? Well, we solved it this way. Um, and we want to kind of come together on common solutions for all of these. We, we kind of talked about the idea of best practices for these. I don't really like the word best practice because, you know, who knows what it will be like in a year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, these are the things that are working for us now. Um, we also have a few blog posts about them as well, which Daniel mentioned. Um, but they're not necessarily like the only way of doing things. So we want to at least provide the information. Um, so you know, you could do routing this way or this way. These are the trade-offs. Um, so yeah, with these are like some of the hard problems we've we've discussed recently. Um, definitely not the only problems with decoupling. Um, Path aliases, so we now have this snail module available on the contenter GitHub. So uh, on the front end, if your consumer supports friendly URLs, so you know a website has URLs, then typically editors want to be able to have control over every way that looks. Uh, and in Drupal, we have lots of really great tools to manage paths, like the path auto field, uh, module, and you can put your path in. It makes it from the title, you can change it, you redirect, all that good stuff. But exposing that to a front end can be a bit tricky because Drupal has its own routing system. So if you wanted to make a node that was called admin on the front page, then you're going to completely trash your admin page on the back end because they don't live together. So uh, yeah, we had this epic discussion in Contenta Slack over this and ended up with the snail module, which kind of um, pulls those two routing systems apart. So check that one out. We've also had great discussions about WYSIWYG editors because you know editors always want to make stuff bold and kind of talking about the, the boundaries that we can set about how that works in a decoupled world. So we do want to attach metadata to things. We can't just have these plain text fields. Um, we would love to, but you know that's just kind of like not how sites end up working in the real world. So we're working on like how you embed images, how you had, uh, yeah, all text, not colors, probably, <laughs> like that. Um, and yeah, this like moves on to the idea of having these multiple consumers. So um, we can attach all these things to blobs of text, but uh, we need to have it available to our consumers in a way that's more of a suggestion, because, for example, Alexa isn't going to understand what this image embedded in the middle of the text means. So we try and think about those things quite carefully. Uh, image styles, as Daniel mentioned, that's uh, <laughs> a huge problem when you decouple. Uh, and I think we're going to be sprinting on that tomorrow, so if you want to come and join in, that's quite a fun one. Um, like when you normally build your Drupal site, you can say in you go to the image styles module, you say I want these three different sizes, and that's all that's available. But in the decoupled world, we have no idea what kind of sizes uh, our consumers actually want, and if we just turned it on in Drupal that anyone can start generating images, they'll, they'll probably kill your entire site. So <laughs> there's problems there. Um, when you install Contenta, we try and set up a lot of authentication options for you too. Uh, the fantastic old model that Mateo has worked on a lot. Uh, because setting that stuff up in Drupal can be kind of tricky. It's like all the modules are there, but it can be hard to plug them all together and understand how those authentication flows work. So try to have it so you install it, you can go in and then you can get your client keys and pretty much get going straight away. And authentication um, isn't just for editors who might want to log in and change content on a back end. You know, you've got users who want to bookmark things or come in and write comments, all kinds of stuff. And then one big thing, <laughs> we actually had a discussion today about how difficult this is, is release cycles and API versioning and that is a super hard problem. And we have we have some solutions for them in like small narrow use cases, but um, yeah, if you want to come and talk about that one tomorrow, <laughs> that's a really good one. Um, so we have a demo application. Uh, when you install, you can decide to use our recipe site, or you can completely wipe things away and it looks more like reservoir. But with the demo application, we want to show you how you would actually build things in real life. And we follow the out-of-the-box initiative, which uh, Christina, who couldn't be here today, sadly, um, is working on. And with that initiative, 
uh, they want to have it so you can install Drupal and you get this recipe site called Umami and it just shows off all the power of Drupal and what you can build in a coupled environment. So we want to follow that so that you can directly compare what it's like to build these two same sites with completely different techniques. It's a recipe site, so it has quite a rich content model. It's not just like a blog. There's all kinds of odd things, like little embeddable touts in there, and lists all over the place, and menus, and all those hard things you build, you run into when you build an actual site. And the other nice thing is we can reuse the wireframes that the initiative has come up with. So if someone wants to come and build a web consumer, then we can say, OK, here you go. Go off and build that. And then when you're working with the other consumers, you can kind of collaborate a bit more. Like, how did you do this list? Why did I use this? And yeah, so that's kind of nice. Uh, when we build other kind of more off the wall consumers, like chatbots, this goes a bit out of the window. But it's our starting place, so we can try and adapt our content model to work with all of those. Um, <laughs> this might be a bit out of date, and I'm just trying to like list all the people who are actually working on consumers and. Obviously, we have other people who have committed things and people want to more back-end things, but this is what we have available when I checked earlier. So we have a lot of JavaScript frameworks, um, and they're fantastic. They work really well. Uh, I have worked on the React one. We have Mac use, on the Angular, everybody else. Very fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, the React one, I could talk about because I worked on that. Uh, Try to make it so that it's not just an application that you look at and go, okay, and you go off and build your own thing. The idea is you can actually take part of it and use it to build your own stuff. So we try and solve those problems like server-side rendering, calling APIs, all those things. Uh, and then we also have like a few kind of more interesting ones, well, sorry, <laughs> other interesting ones uh, apart from like typical JavaScript uh, websites. We've got ones in VR, we've got a chatbot. Um, and mobile apps as well. So go check those out. They are super cool. And you can also then just go through and kind of compare how each consumer is accessing and implementing those APIs. Um, this is the view one, which Jan built. There we go. So that's the, the recipe site. Um, he's so productive, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, one thing that I wanted to point out that it's really interesting to well, this is right. Um, it's really interesting to have all the alternatives because you may end up landing. You may be a React lover, but you may end up landing into an Angular JS project. And if you have something that you know how you would do in React, you can go and compare. Oh, so this is how you do it in Angular. I think that's uh, one of the major wins. No, no, you go ahead. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Drupal developer part. This is this is funny because uh, I've not been doing Drupal development uh, for a while now, uh, but it's like my passion. So I, can, I think I can talk about this. Um, so a Drupal developer lands in a decoupled project and one of the things that Contenta can give you is it kind of figures out most of the stuff that you would need to do. So this kind of uh, goes back to the idea that Sally was presenting about uh, the well-established or the tried-out patterns that uh, we found that they work. And in this case, it's not just going to the Contenta composer project and say, oh, they use this module, this module, and this other module. But there's also some kind of uh, subtleties that go into how you configure some of this stuff, uh, or the things that you can do in case you don't want that field be part of your API, or how you solve cores so it doesn't become a problem you know, when uh, someone else is working on it and you have something else to do. So all these kind of stuff, the, the things that we had to figure out on the way, they just go in. And uh, that's something that you, that you inherit when you install Contenta. And so what we thought about is that um, the journey of a Drupal developer that has not 
been lucky enough to be in a decouple project before, uh, because that's what we all love here, decouple projects. Um, is it would be like first install content that they probably wouldn't go through the one a click installation that Danny was referring before, or one command installation, because you know we're talking about the Drupal developer. They, they know how to set up uh, a web server. Uh, MySQL or whatever database they, they want to do and use Composer to download all the stuff. Um, but once they have content installed, if they choose to uh, install the add-on that brings in all the recipes, which is totally optional, uh, but if they decide to do so because they want to see what you, know, uh, what you get as the end result, what am I shooting for with this decouple business? Um, so. They install that and they can explore the API right away. Um, uh, Ted provided a good caption of what that looks like because we're using the same Drupal module and that's just something that you put in there and, and it works. Um, so after exploring the API, how it looks like, uh, how the consumers would need to make the calls and you know, rubbing the head around that, uh, it can be time to uh, try out a consumer, and this is uh, one. This is a big thing for me. Like, for me, it's always been the fancier thing that I ship is a JSON object. Like, uh, I see life through JSON objects. But there are people that actually can take that and make a beautiful website. And as a Drupal developer, I can just go and choose one of these and say, I'm gonna use the. Amber Karstak uh, consumer and just start seeing how it looks like. Um, I'm probably going to use the one that my team is going to be implementing, right? But you don't need to. Uh, that's why the content uh, logo looks like a small plug and that, that's the, the main idea. So after you try that and you see that it actually works and what's happening in the network, um, you may go and see, okay, this is not exactly what I'm gonna be building, uh, but there are documentations, or at least pointers to documentation, uh, right in there. And it, this is a manually curated list of documentation, and, we'll, and we would love uh, for people to bring we would love for people to bring uh, more links. So if you have documentation that anyways, once once you have kind of figured out that you know your project is probably not going to be a recipe magazine website, uh, and you are <laughs> you have read the documentation on how you will fill in the details that you know separate your site from uh, the demo site, it's you know, probably the moment to do a one-click removal of this add-on that brings in some configuration and demo content and leave your uh, content installation like clean and pristine. And uh, in there, you have all the might of Drupal. Um, we went to the route of saying, you know, Drupal, one of the things that Drupal does very well is it has a module ecosystem that provides you features like this. Like you can have, um, you know, configuration options. You can have uh, the workflow initiative br brought in. You can have um, a lot of editorial tools, uh, content modeling tools, just by using Drupal itself. So uh, that's the idea. You leave Contenta as a, as a Drupal flavor dis distribution, uh, which is what it is. And finally, you start working on your stuff. You build your content model, you're probably gonna have to uh, build, as a Drupal developer, some, some glue code for those crazy special features that all the websites have, or all the uh, decoupled experiences have. And uh, that's the point where Contenta cannot do anything about you, about it. Um, so you're kind of on your own. But we're talking about Contenta as if it was software, but con Content is not a software. Content is a community of people that uh, like this type of stuff, and it's very similar to the people in this room because uh, we are passionate about you know providing decoupled experiences with Drupal, and we've been doing that um, for a, for a while now. And uh, well, some of us have, uh, some others 
you know, are bringing other perspectives and helping out that way. And um, the focus that Sally was putting on those discussions is because it is really inspiring to get in there and see, oh, I have, I don't know, 25 new mentions in the content slot. And what's been going on is that uh, they had this uh, super critical discussion about, hey, how do you guys deal with this problem? And people add their, they are the, their bid, and we come up with something that we can act on, or we come up with a list of unsolvable problems, or whatever. The thing is that we talk about it. All right. And finally, um, I'm saying this because this, uh, this community, this content community, uh, we are building, like, I think it's pretty cool software. Uh, we have a, a GitHub repository, and just get involved. Come to Slack and just, you know, uh, lay in there and read the conversations if you want. Uh, participate by all means uh, if you if you want to ask questions. Uh, but if you feel that people can help you, um, I'm sure that everyone feels like this. Everyone that's there feels like this. Uh, just ask and. Uh, we are welcoming people, and uh, we want to to help you figure out your stuff. And and finally, um, I want to to say that come help as much as as you want, and you know disappear if you need to. Like there is no commitment. Just get involved and uh, yeah, do some decoupling stuff. That's it.